Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to Women's AM. This morning we are talking about teaching your children Arabic and if you have any tips to share or questions to ask about this then please do call in. The number is on your screen now or you can tweet us at Islam channel hashtag WAM. So coming back to the um, the panel, um, so is it, uh, is it realistic to expect a child to speak Arabic fluently given that we're live in, living in an English speaking country and um, Sister Nasrat? I think um, it depends, it's both a yes and no question. I think it depends on the level of proficiency and le of learning Arabic and whether actually it's something that's nurtured within home because you'll find that even with other languages if we hear it a lot at home we pick it up despite the fact that we may li not live in a society or culture where it's spoken regularly so if there's a regular review yes you can do it however when the home is not in an environment where you can't speak Arabic for whatever reason or it's not spoken widely you find that even if you did know it you tend to lose it so it can be sometimes unrealistic because even in the school you're perhaps not learning it yeah. so it can be very easy to lose but um, but I think the issue here is actually that we should um, despite the fact that we live in a society that doesn't speak um, Arabic and Arabic is not something that's widely spoken you can still work really hard to try and ensure that the, that you do still retain the little that you know so yeah. again try and supplement it at home yeah absolutely yeah. true um, um, yeah I was just going to add um, mm. like you said if, mm. if, it, if it's a language that's spoken at home then it's, it's an expectation that you can have. It might not work out, but it's an expectation that you can have. But if, it, if you're not a native speaker, like me, I'm not a native speaker, we don't have anyone in my household who's a native Arabic speaker, it can be an unrealistic expectation. Yeah. So I think getting to a point where you understand that, okay, they might not be fluent, but as long as they're proficient enough, then, you know, alhamdulillah, what can I do to, to yeah. help them with that? Because yeah. when I was growing up, we have like a lot of languages spoken in our family, and one language that I picked up uh, uh, was um, one that wasn't native to me but I picked up because one my mom spoke it two we constantly watched television in that language three we went on holidays often enough and then because I wanted to learn it I really picked up and now I find that I'm fluent in it yeah. so I think it co it comes down to a lot of factors yeah absolutely absolutely true and I think um, it's really interesting what you were talking about there about the motivation and the fact that you wanted to speak that language and I think this is really important when it comes to teaching our children Arabic doesn't it so how can we motivate them um, Sister Nasima. Um, I think one of the things is, um, you know, Arabic is linked back to our deen so strongly. So yes. build yeah. that aqidah in them, that, that they believe in Allah and that they want to build that relationship with Allah. And, you know, that they know that to, in order to do this, that they need the Arabic language to yeah. be able to yeah. do that. And um, that's the motivation in itself. But also, um, we should bring in examples from the past and the present. So if we look to the past, um, when the Islamic civilization existed, it was Arabic that was the language that made them thrive. And, uh, you know, you can give them examples of, for example, like Imam Shafi, who was like a great poet and you know all the scholars that existed yeah. at the time they needed the Arabic language to be able to you know do the ijtihad um, yes, to, to look yeah. at the rulings um, and so the Arabic language there was really important yeah um, and then also I'll say give them um, you know something to look forward to in their future that yeah. they're yeah. going to be the future ambassadors of Islam they're going to be the ones that are representing the Muslims yeah. that they want to be the future scholars and they want to be the future leaders of the state um, so if, in order for this to for them to you know have that motivation and vision you know um, that will actually really help them. Yeah, we I need think. to make them understand that this is gonna you know as I said languages do open doors and this is gonna open you know the best of doors who kind of gateway into understanding Islam more and conveying that to others. But even if uh, for example your kids are young to the point where you know Dean for them isn't the Dean but it's just part of something that they've grown up with so even appealing to them in a different way so say for example you teach them about geography so oh my goodness look at how many countries speak the Arabic language wouldn't it yeah. be amazing to be able to go visit visit all of these places and do all of these things and be able to speak to people. Yeah. So I think that also helps as well, especially if you've got kids that are adventurous, you can appeal to that adventurous side as well. That yeah. definitely helped me, definitely. <laughs> I found like even something like singing, um, um, particularly Nasheeds, that's something that actually helps um, your yearning for wanting to learn the Arabic language. Because if you listen to a Nasheed that's in Arabic, you want to pick it up so you can understand what's being said. You'll find that through understanding what's being said, you can now incorporate that in your casual um, conversation. So there was actually research done into this actually by Su Jin Yang at University of Toronto and he does he's a postdoctoral researcher and he said that it's that to an effective way to get kids to actually learn um, Arabic or even a second language in situations where the second language surrounds them so yeah. if they're hearing it somewhere whether it's a song dance whatever it will help them and he said that we find that children learning a second language in the immersion setting show an overall success rate in grammatical knowledge mm -hmm. similar to English mon 
are monolingual people. So you'll find that through them actually seeing that, they'll actually gain the rules of grammar, sometimes subliminally without them even knowing it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think, mm. you know, what you said about, um, you know, wanting to understand is, is really important. I can remember watching, um, you know, kind of uh, Quran recitations, you know, live from Mecca and that kind of thing, and seeing people just weeping, you know, at that this kind of beautiful recitation, but also the meaning and just feeling so kind of disjointed from that and I left know. out from that and wanting to be a part of it. So I think that's a huge motivation and we can pass that on to our children as well. Um, but now, you know, I want to get down to the nitty gritty and I want some, you know, tips and tools and things that we can pass on to the viewers um, and each other as well to, to, to kind of help uh, teach our children. Um, Sister Nasima, I'm going to start with you. Yeah, I think one of the things is um, to try and make it as part of your daily life as much as possible. So um, maybe what you can do is like start labeling things or like at least giving the names of things to children like this is a spoon this is how you say in Arabic um, and you make it part of your day-to-day -day life for example yeah. so like rather than give me the spoon you say like you know give me the spoon in Arabic or give me a tissue in Arabic or something like that that's you, a really good tip you, actually so you're making it part of their daily life in yeah. a sort of subtle way isn't yeah, it they, yeah. they might you know as time goes by you add more words so that they yeah, start yeah. realizing that oh yeah I've heard this word and maybe they're hearing Quran recitation and they realize they you know I heard that word yeah uh, you know my mom was teaching me and you know the excitement when you hear I know when I hear something um, you know from Quran recitation and I understand it you know the, the kind of excitement and the buzz that you get from that it, you know that kind of pushes you to do more as well so if you try and get them yeah. to pick out those words then that that's gonna spur them on isn't it because it makes them feel like they're getting somewhere yeah that's it. you know what the funny thing is is that you say that and that just reminded me of a time I went on holiday and um, basically I went to Salat al Jum'ah in this place and I didn't understand the khutbah in the native language but then when they did the khutbah in Arabic I was so happy that I understood most of what was being said and I was like oh my wow. god subhanallah it's amazing <laughs> and you know what the funny thing is is that learning things you know um, in sort of a non-conventional way because sometimes sitting down with a pen and a book yeah. and things like yeah. that doesn't really work and especially if your kids are young you know they're not going to want to sit down and yeah. just you know l look like they're at school again while they're at yeah. home so it really really helps to make it fun so have flashcards have like little games that you can play um, and also kind of watch programs that they would that they normally watch in English that they like see if you can find the same uh, program in Arabic and get them to watch it or even watch episodes that they've seen before in English and watch it in Arabic so they know what's going on absolutely so, so then they kind of learn to pick things up as well as absolutely they're watching true. it that's a great tip we have a caller on the line we have sister Razia assalamu alaikum sister um, well, well, what's um, your quick tip for us um, basically um, I taught myself some Arabic and um, oh, what I found very beneficial sorry I probably can't hear you very well because I've got the children crying no that's um, fine we can hear you um, but I created like a book, like things like um, the home, all things dedicated to the home. So just basically a nice folder for yourself yeah. and then the children later to follow. My children are very small, but just things about the home, introducing people and things like that. And that really helps. Yeah. And yeah. you find those words similarly in the Quran later on. Absolutely. Um, so that was just my suggestion. Absolutely. Today. And what a fantastic suggestion. I think it's a really good, again, it's kind of using the, the, the terminology and the words that they're used to using and the situations that, will, that they're used to using them in, in Arabic. And it's kind of making the unfamiliar a bit more familiar. Uh, so, Sister Nazra, what's your quick take home message? Take advantage of the resources out there available. There's so many, at least in comparison to when I was a kid, there's so many resources available. So, the Muslim Education or Literary Service actually have um, audio and visual tips actually on how to uh, grasp Arabic whether you're a child or not and the way they do it is so interactive that you actually get it um, Adam's world um, the puppet from um, the Islamic circle of North America he does good videos actually that help with the Arabic language yeah and that really inspire and encourage children yeah that's true there are a lot of really good DVDs out there actually that, mm. that kind of focus on the Arabic language and it's good to engage children in those Jazakallah for all those fantastic tips Arabic is the language in which the Quran was revealed and it's the language spoken by our beloved Prophet, peace be upon him and his companions, may Allah be pleased with them. So it is incredibly important that we not just teach our children to have a true and deep understanding of the word of Allah, but also for us to be that example to our children. And if we want our children to have a love for something or to excel in it, we must show our love and our motivation in excelling in the same thing. After all, the children's first role models are their parents. May Allah make it easy for all of us to be the best kind of role model for our children. Ameen. What a great discussion and teaching our children Arabic is an obligation that we as parents cannot take lightly.
If you missed any of this episode, don't forget we have our highlight show on Sunday at 3 p.m. That will give you a roundup of all the best bits from this week. We're off to another break now, but do stay tuned as when we return, we'll be giving you a guide to create a floral centerpiece that promises to brighten up any iftar table. Just before we go, it's day nine of the Sora Mulk Challenge, and here is the ninth ayah and translation.